So why should you spend time learning how to create effective and engaging presentations? What are the benefits? That's a question I'm going to answer in this video. Now, in a previous video, we talked about how you're super busy, you have a million things to do. So we posed the question, why add to that by learning how to make better presentations? And in that video, I talked about how being an effective presenter is really good for your career. But what are other reasons besides it being good for your career? How is it good for your audience and good for you? Well, for one, when you present in standard academic ways like this slide here, walls of text, bad visuals, tables of data instead of data visualizations, you probably see a lot of bored or confused or frustrated faces. Or maybe your audience asks you questions where it becomes obvious that they weren't really following you at all or understanding what you said in the presentation. That's no good. But when you start to share your information in more engaging ways like this, well, you start to see their expressions change. You, you have an audience that's nodding and smiling and following along with you. They're paying attention. And maybe you even see the light bulbs light up while you're talking. Ah, that is so much better. I'm guessing you've experienced both of these at some point. So, you know, take a moment to think about how each of them makes you feel when you see them. The one on the left probably makes you feel kind of crappy or frustrated. And the one on the right probably leaves you feeling empowered or invigorated like your effort was worth it, right? When you present effectively, you will rarely see these confused or bored or frustrated faces and, you know, seeing the faces of understanding and nodding and smiling, that actually becomes more of the norm. Imagine how nice that would be. All right, what else? Well, have you ever been frustrated because you know your field or research topic or whatever you're teaching them in class that day is actually really cool or interesting or important, but you just can't seem to instill that same passion and excitement in your audience? Well, take a look at how you're presenting this information. You know, I see so many people on Twitter every August talking about how, you know, no one's paying attention to them. So they are going to ban laptops and they blame the laptops. But I'm over here like, mm, how are you sharing your information? Is it on slides that look like this maybe? Because if so, the problem is probably your lecture style and not your students and definitely not laptops. I swear I am not trying to be mean. Just, you know, really truly think about it. You know, who, who in the world would really be excited about a field or a topic when it's shared in a boring, bullet pointed wall of text way? Those walls of text, that's not meeting your audience halfway well-designed slides, that's meeting your audience halfway. You know, adding narratives and storytelling and, and metaphors and analogies and great visuals and finding ways to resonate with your audience, right? Like that's how you engage people in your topic. And when you create slides that match your excitement and passion for the field and are well-designed, then your audience is going to pick up on that passion and excitement and importance, right? They'll see that you spent time making great slides, so they'll know that they should pay attention. Now, sometimes people just really aren't <laughs> interested in the topic and no amount of slide design can help. But, you know, when you have really well-designed slides, getting people excited about your topic is definitely going to be more likely. Quick check-in. I'm just curious, what do you think so far? Are these the types of things you would like to see happen when you present? If so, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. Now, a big challenge that a lot of us face is that we need to share information that is scary or heartbreaking or devastating. You know, maybe we have to talk about climate change and how we're losing tons of species every single year, or maybe we have to talk about police brutality and racism. You know, my background is in domestic violence and child abuse, so I have struggled with this. 
So I know that puts you at a huge risk of conveying information in ways where people just put their blinders on. You know, they block themselves from hearing it because it's so horrible or destroys their positive worldview or their belief in a just world. Or they feel it so much that they just become a hot mess and can't process their emotions and they can't regulate their emotions, you know, or it's done in a way that, you know, re-traumatizes people. We have to pay attention to that in our presentations. Our presentations need to be designed in a certain way. Certain visuals should be used and some should be avoided. The pacing and the framing matters a lot. And if we can do that effectively, we actually have a chance for people to hear us. Instead of shutting people down or making them overwhelmed, we can do this in a way where people understand it and see how serious it is, but also feel a sense that, you know, something needs to be done and maybe they're actually part of that positive social change. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that all you need is to have better slides and you'll convince people of whatever you want. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did, but it doesn't. But you have no chance to do that with slides that look like this. Okay, if you have better slides and better presentations, you're increasing your chances of getting people to hear you. If you share difficult information, you've probably experienced both. And the thing is, is when you present effectively, shutting people down and overwhelming them with negative emotions, it becomes less likely and getting people to hear you and be there with you and not turn away, it becomes more likely when you present in effective and engaging ways. Again, it is totally more than just good slides and a good storyboard, but it is part of it. And just as a quick side note, because I know people will ask for me to make a video about how to storyboard and how to frame their information in a way where people are more likely to hear it. And I'm sorry, but I don't anticipate sharing that type of information on my YouTube channel. It's the type of thing that I include in my online course, like blast off to stellar slides, or we talk about during our group calls or even through one-to-one -one private sessions, because a lot of this needs to be tailored to the information itself, your presenting style, and the audience. So you will need to take training if you would want to work on this. Okay, so far I've talked about how being an effective presenter is really good for your audience. You know, it helps them understand you, it helps them get excited about the information you share, makes them better able to handle difficult topics. But what about you? How does it help you? We need to care about that. We really do. You know, and again, beyond your career, because I've already made a video about that. Well, let me ask you this. If your slides look like this, how excited are you about sharing this information with others? Chances are not very excited. You know, how often are you bored with your own presentation before you even open your slide deck and start to present? You know, or maybe you're not bored with your slides, but you're embarrassed by them and you've either apologized for your slides before you begin or you've kind of wanted to, right? That's not good for you. That destroys your confidence. It makes you feel bad about yourself. You know, it's imposter syndrome fuel. But when you take control and you create slides that you know will impress your audience and have that wow factor, now you're excited about your presentation before you even begin. You're going to walk up to that podium or start that webinar with confidence, and that's going to help you deliver an effective presentation. Again, I'm guessing that you've experienced both already, but which one do you tend to experience more often? Okay, I know a lot of people tend to be bored with their own presentations. So that's the power of starting to move away from the standard way of presenting and starting to present in more effective and engaging ways. You will rarely be bored with your own presentation if it's really effective and engaging. If it's a well-designed presentation, you're gonna be excited to share it with others. And related to that, when you present slides that look like this, how do you feel when you're done? At best, you probably felt like, well, okay, you know, I guess I made it through to the end. <laughs> At least it's done. 
But at worst, you feel like total crap. You feel like that was a disaster and you could tell everyone was bored or disengaged or not caring or understanding. It does not have to be that way. When you are an effective presenter, the overwhelming majority of time, you will end that presentation feeling like a total boss. Maybe not 100% of the time, bad presentations still happen every now and then. I even have them. But it's not the norm, not even close. It happens rarely. Rarely do you feel like you completely bombed a presentation. Most of the time, you will be proud of the presentations or webinars or lectures or workshops that you give. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And by the way, yes, these were all made in PowerPoints. PowerPoint is amazing. I did use a Wacom tablet to make drawing easier, but they were all drawn and animated in PowerPoint. And my next video, I'm going to show you how to use this feature. So stay tuned. And if you are in my online course, Blast Off to Stellar Slides, new lessons about how to do this are coming this year. I really enjoyed making this style of video, but you know, let me know what you think. Did you like this? Should I do this more? Um, let me know in the comments below and be sure to like. And hopefully this video inspires you to think about your presentations and PowerPoint differently than you have before. Hopefully I made you excited about the idea of making better presentations. If so, definitely check out my signature course called Blast Off to Stellar Slides. Just in case you're new to my channel, it's my online program made specifically for academics, scientists, researchers, evaluators, and similar professionals. Basically people who use slides for lectures and conference presentations, final project presentations, keynotes, job talks, teaching demos, workshops, <laughs> you know, things like that. So more information is linked below and you can get started for free with my course Stellar Slides in 5. That link is also below. Well, as usual, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, share it with someone who might be interested and subscribe. And yeah, I'm Dr. Echo Rivera and thank you for helping me end death by PowerPoint. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.